That's from the bank. Uh, Prodium is a transaction that you refer to. We had some illiquid assets uh, that we sold, uh, so Prodium is not a part of, of Barclays. Um, so, so we did have some sticky illiquid assets that we sold, uh, and it's something that the regulators and the FSA were aware of. I think all banks came through this period recognizing that Quite frankly, we had some assets on the balance sheet that were less liquid than we had hoped and were more difficult to move. So and is your, is your personal remuneration in any way tied to the performance of that subsidiary? Well, my, uh, no, we don't. It's not, it's not owned by Barclays. Okay. Chuck Romano. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, just picking up on uh, the reference to the benefit of stimulus for the sector, you said in your CBI speech in October that you were grateful for the stimulus and that you recognised the benefits and accepted that obligations went with that. Would you say that one of the ways companies meet their obligations to society is through the payment of tax, yes or no? I think uh, payment of tax is an important responsibility of businesses, yes. Could you tell me how many subsidiary companies your group uses and are incorporated in the Isle of Man? I don't have that number with me. I'd be happy to look into it. And well, according to the return that your group company put in last year, you have 30 subsidiaries operating in that jurisdiction. Can you tell me how many subsidiary companies you have operating in Jersey? Uh, I don't have that number with me either. The number is 38. Can you tell me how many subsidiary companies of your group are incorporated and operating in the Cayman Islands? Same answer. You have 181. Now, of course, all of these are well-known tax havens which are used by companies, and a cursory reading of your group returns shows that you have over 300 such companies operating in tax haven jurisdictions around the world. Um, could you confirm that whilst you headed up Barcap, the bank's structured capital markets division sat within Barcap? You, if you like, had oversight of it. Yes, it did. So that division runs tax arbitrage for your bank, for high net worth individuals, um, for companies which enable you all to avoid the payment of UK tax? That's not correct. That's not correct. Why? Uh, structured capital markets is part of our overall financing operation. Um, it is our obligation when we do financing for clients uh, to do it in the most tax efficient way. So it's an institutional business. It works within our financing. I'll, I'll give you a very good example. When the <clears throat> United Kingdom decided to develop the Canary Wharf area, they created, I forget the exact phrase, but a tax-free zone. And so in order to encourage people to move to Canary Wharf and to build buildings, mm. um, they did it um, with tax benefits. One of the things that we have done is we have been at the forefront of leading financing of many of those businesses, of many of those buildings, uh, using the expertise in the area that you talk about with our financing capability. Um, and so we're doing things that are completely in line with uh, government incentives. They want people to move. They want people to go to Canary Wharf. They're using tax incentives to do it. Uh, I'd ask AJ to, to speak as well. It's no different than ICES. Okay. ICES are a government um, so, incentive so if it's, if, if it's for case tax this, efficient did, savings. I, I don't, sorry, Mr. Dunn, I, I don't not have that much time and, and we want answers and not speeches. But, but, um, the, but if I just ask you this question, if it wasn't engaged in tax avoidance, why then did your bank injunct the Guardian in March 2009 when they sought to disclose the activities of that division within the bank? Again, that's not why we did it. I'm happy to explain. The information that the Guardian released had two features to it. One, it was already known to HMRC. They had the documents. We had sent them before the transaction. Our injunction was because someone stole confidential client information, which is against the law. Okay. Well, obviously, the payment of tax by banks in the sector is of great interest to everybody. And, we paid uh, you've $2 billion pounds in tax in... in uh, we paid £2 billion in tax last year to HMRC, and over the last six years, we paid about £12.5 billion in of tax. Of that £2 so I think billion, that's the number of that that two billion what percentage were non-payroll taxes? Uh, I don't have a payroll tax paid by your employees, but in terms of the corporate tax, we don't really know the figure, do we, That's Mr. the payment Diamond? from Barclays to HMRC. 
Yes, but of what per what percentage of that was non payroll tax? I haven't got the percentages. But well, then we don't really know what, as a corporate entity, you're paying. Um, now, obviously, um, you are signed up to the new code of practice for tax that the government's put in place, and that requires compliance with the spirit and not just the letter of the law. Will you commit today to reducing the number of offshore companies you are currently using to transact business to demonstrate that you will comply with that code? Well, we have signed the code. We are complying with both the spirit and the letter uh, of the law, and that was what was asked of us, and we're happy to do it. So will you commit to reducing your use of offshore companies to transact business? I'm happy to look into the numbers that you gave. I didn't have them, and it <gasps> would, that, not, that, be, that, that it would not be appropriate for me to agree to something that I'm not sure of the facts of. I am happy to look into it and, and write to you and write to the committee if that's helpful. But it's because not a, you will understand, Mr. Diamond, that there's obviously, I mean, if you look at the facts I've just presented, that would suggest that your bank is engaged on tax avoidance on a grand scale, would it not? Uh, I can assure you Barclays is not uh, evading taxes. And if um, I, I can assure you that it is our obligation. Uh, that, sorry, that wasn't the question I asked. I said avoidance. I was very careful not to use the word evasion, Mr. Diamond. Well, I don't know what you would. I think tax evasion is a very clear phrase, and it's a space we would never I know, go to. And I didn't use the and word. And I, I chose the word tax efficiency, which is our obligation, and it's something that is in line with government policy. But your efficiency may be our avoidance. Can I just pass? I, I, I don't think it? that's the case. You don't I, think, I think that's you, the case? I am very, very confident. I'll answer the question directly. I have a high degree of confidence in the integrity, in the governance. And in, in, in the people that follow both the spirit and the letter of the law in terms of doing the right things in the space. And if I could just ask perhaps one last question. Um, one of the things that contributed to the crash, I think, is generally acknowledged, is reckless and, and perhaps risky behavior in the sector. Um, in some senses, there's a big question mark over your head, Mr. Diamond, because you sought to try and obviously purchase. ABN AMRO at the same time that it was purchased by RBS, you may, may well have ended up being the Fred Goodwin of the crash, and luckily for you that didn't happen. You also sought to try, you pushed very hard to purchase Lehman sometime before it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and you're also a great fan of exchange traded funds, which are also uh, being questioned a lot at the moment. How do you respond to that, and do you understand why perhaps people don't think you are suitable to be running one of the biggest banking institutions in this country? I appreciate the opportunity because there is um, not substance to the accusations. So let me take them in their piece parts. They're very serious questions and they're very serious ac accusations. So uh, AB and AMRA. Um, I was not the chief executive, but I was on the executive team that proposed that deal. And let's walk through it carefully. In March 2007, we had an agreed deal with the board of AB and Emra. That deal was uh, going to be paid for in shares of Barclays, not in cash. There was then a hostile bid. That broke We're going to leave Bob Diamond there, the boss of Barclays, answering questions.